All right, um, here we are at Surfview Gardens. Today we're going to do a product review, an unsolicited product review. I'm just doing this because I had some work to do in the yard and I bought a new device. And so I thought I'd share it with you. The device is a Works Model WG309. It's a 10 inch 8 amp electric pole saw. And I underline the word electric because it does not run on lithium batteries. Even though the store I went to sold nothing but the lithium batteries, I had to order it from their main warehouse and have it shipped to them. But um, it was incredibly affordable. And if you get one of these yourself, you should get it with 14 gauge or less uh, extension cord. So you don't want to run it with thin wire because it'll burn out the motor. So here's the device. It's one of the. It's a type that has a chainsaw basically at the end of a pole and then very far at the very end of it there's electrical hookup I don't know why they didn't show that there but it's there and then you have this little periscoping thing that allows you to make it a little bit further you can make it shorter if you like and um, the just over 10 pounds well it's 13 pounds so I think that's a little bit sneaky but in any event, uh, auto tension and auto lubrication. You can just turn a knob um, in on the other uh, this knob right here, and you can tighten up the chain. And I'll get into a little bit about the um, the little window for the oil in a bit. In any event, here and then you separate the chainsaw can be used separately without the pole, and there is a 10-inch blade. Um, I've, they had one in the store that was an 8 inch, but I said, geesh, you know, an extra couple inches could make a big difference. And I think a lot of you know what I mean. Um, especially when you're trying to cut small trunks, limbs, and logs. So um, at the same time, uh, that's a little bit extra weight, especially if you need a bigger motor. And this baby's got an 8 amp motor, so there's no problem with power on this thing although 13 pounds is a bit much. Um, so this is the Works Model WG309. Before I get in to show you some of the video of me playing with it and opening the box and stuff, I just want to go through some of the highlights. Note, in this video, the product the video that you're going to see, and also the pros and cons here, it's all based on the use of, of it as a pole saw and not as a chainsaw. That will have to come at a different day. So the pros. Inexpensive. Geesh, for $95.31. And if you include the chain oil, which is, I kind of estimated up a little bit, but the whole thing is basically 100 bucks. You could hardly get a manual uh, lung saw for that. And then it's got the telescoping feature. I'll go through these real quickly. Um, easily extends the pole up to 10 feet, reduces the need for using a ladder, um, especially with palm trees. You, um, if you can reach it from the ground, all the better. Toolless assembly, that speaks for itself. All you need to do is just, you know, with your intuition, haha, um, go ahead and start screwing stuff together and no, uh, no actual parts involved. And the, the, the chain tensioning, um, I've seen some models, um, not of the Works brand, but of other ones where you need to pull out a screwdriver to tighten up the chain. And this one, you just you have a, just a cool and easy knob um, to go ahead and do that. I'll just show you that to you right, right quickly. That thing right there, you just turn that and it loosens up the chain a little bit if you're working on it. And then you tighten it up more when you're starting to do your saw. And uh, easy manual chain tensioning, we, got, we said that. Safety operations, this I thought was pretty important. Um, it automatically, the safety automatically engages when you take your finger off the trigger. So that way um, it doesn't accidentally start up if you were to unplug the, the cable and plug it back in and have it, wouldn't that be terrible? Is to have it, the chain saw already moving just because you plugged it into the wall or plugged in the cable into the device. So this is really good. I give a big kudos to those guys because safety-wise, an automatic safety engagement, then you just push the little button before you want to pull the trigger. So I think that's good. 
And then power, uh, 8 amp, very powerful motor, runs off 110 volt common AC in the United States. Um, it's a lot of power. And then with no battery used, then there's no battery, lithium battery to recharge. That's cool. So that can be both a pro and a con. So let's go through the cons. It weighs 13 pounds. Um, uh, you, you know, people will develop some nice strong shoulders uh, keeping that baby up in the air. Um, and that's only when you're using the pole, of course. And then uh, as the chainsaw itself, I, like I said, this was only tested in the pole saw mode. I didn't pull it off. I had nothing to cut up as a cha with a chainsaw. Remaining oil window. This is my biggest qualm. You guys who, you people who saw me did the mouse trap one, my biggest qualm there was keeping those darn doors open. But, you know, the one, the human interaction with it by the, by the person, they have an oil window, but it's opaque. I can't, I could not see the difference between empty or partially full. And so when I, and you'll see in this video, when I was pouring the oil with the funnel, um, I put in too much. But I swear I couldn't see it half full. I couldn't see any difference. So it works. Make it clear. Why in the world would you make it opaque so that you can't even see what you know what's in it? So um, rework it and make a clear window. Geesh. That, whoever designed that um, should rethink it. Uh, power. Same thing that's a benefit over here is a negative in another aspect because if you were trying to cut something out in the woods, um, you couldn't, it would be tough to have an extension cord that's 14 gauge or less. Remember, the, the smaller the number, the more, the fatter the wire is. I don't know why they made it that way. It's counterintuitive. But the bottom line is that it should be 14 or less. And, um, and then if you can use it, give it a break every once in a while, because um, you'll burn out the motor if you have too thin of a wire. Uh, and I had about six branches to cut, and I had I used a 16 gauge, which is too thin. But because I wasn't doing it all day, um, and I only had about five or six branches to cut, that was not a problem. And then portability, which relates to power. If you you're limited to within 150 feet of a permanent AC source, unless you have a generator. So if you wanted to cut something way out in your back 40, um, and you didn't have a generator and you didn't have and it was far further away than your your extension cords put together then you might have might have been better off choosing a lithium battery one but um, I, I feel that those would run out of juice pretty quickly so in any event um, let's take a quick peek at uh, some cool thing that, um, so right here I wanted to show you the ad for it at the place that's selling it now what do you see that's wrong in this picture looks like the device you say well okay um, where is the extension cable you Say, well there it is right there okay and then it's going up behind him but it's supposed to connect right where his hand is because that's where it connects um, and so it's a little silly it's just a you know an actor but it's not really connected. There should be wire in front of him, not in, stuck in his back pocket, because I don't see any orange cable connected in the front here. So if you at home saw that, uh, power to you. And so we'll take a quick few pictures of the things. Um, of course, you, once you assemble it, you connect it to the electric there. There you put the oil in at the top. There's your uh, your tightening, and then um, there's a close-up of the uh, tension uh, kind of thing for the chainsaw. And there's the ending. That's at the very end, and you, right over there's the safety button. So it ought, it's really cool the way that it automatically once you, as long as you haven't turned it on, it's always in the safety mode. It happens automatically. So when you want to um, push that trigger right there. You go ahead and start it after you push in the safety. And then when you let go of it, the safety automatically pops out. And so that way it doesn't automatically start running. So that's cool. But I just wanted to show you this cool thing. This is like 
you know, um, just a pretty cool advertising thing. Um, but right there is my problematic little window. I swear, and you'll see in the video, I it looked the same empty as it did full. And so I ended up spilling oil, and it made me very upset. Um, so that was the one basic drawback of the thing. Would I buy it again? Um, of course I would. This is a great device. It saves a lot of hassle. And um, let's go ahead and watch the video of me using it. There we go. Hi, it's uh, late October. Um, maybe about the uh, 26th, I think. 25th today. And today uh, we're going to do a... Uh, we're going to trim these palm trees, or palm tree. As you can see, my rule about it never hitting the roof um, has been violated for quite a few weeks now. But I don't want to have to get a ladder in here and dork around with um, cutting it manually. Now these in the front here, these are fine. Um, I like it. I like protecting the side and giving it shade. But the goal today is to get rid of all of these ones that are touching the house. They have in Arizona what are called roof rats. And you've already seen me have a few a video about removing rats. So I don't want them scaling up the side of the palm tree and then climbing onto the roof. That would be well worth avoiding. Because if they ever got in the attic, that would suck. So the goal today is to cut these things. Got a real nice day today. You know, we may, I think tomorrow or the next day, we're not even going to get out, we're not even going to get into the 70s. It's going to be like 67. That's unheard of. I think we're done with the 90s for this year. Today we top out at about 86, 87. But um, here are my friends, the San Pedros, which I will do a video on. And of course, the uh, Moringas are just kicking ass. I'm sorry, doing really well. And uh, sugar cane. Look at all of these white flowers. They already have a head start on um, the pods. So we're gonna do a, a little video soon about the um, acerola cherry flowers but today let's stay on course we're going to do a product review of the device I'm using to cut sometimes I have to be aware of scorpions that come in but looks like we're good so we're going to do a video about the work works Product number WG309, and there it is. It's got a um, it's a two-in-one pole saw, Ch pole saw chainsaw. So in other words, it's convertible. You see that top part? You can take off the top part and have a 10-inch chainsaw, and it's electric. I don't want to screw around with lithium batteries. Um, so let's go ahead and move that. Over here, where we can take a look at it. So we're going to see the uh, the unboxing. And um, one thing to note when you if you're buying one of these things, by the way, this thing cost me like less than a hundred bucks. They have a little notice on it that says, "By the way." Um, Maximum 10 foot reach. Toolless extension pool insul pole installation. I like that. Compact and lightweight design. Two in one chainsaw. Oh, here's the important part.
the bar and chain saw bar and chain oil is not included so before I left the store I already had the intuition that it um, didn't come so for like for five bucks I went ahead and got this bar and chain oil so um, so the whole thing still costs less than a hundred bucks and then I already had one of these and so supposedly you need like um, 14 gauge or 12 gauge wire otherwise it would heat up a lot but it's not like I'm doing a ton of work so I have a nice long extension cord which I will connect in the workshop only has to go just a few feet and then uh, put I'm gonna put the oil in and then I'm going to um, reach up there and you know hopefully that's how it's all gonna be that simple so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get a funnel and uh, get get that unboxed and we'll take it from there all right there she be so let's see how intuitive this is So, let's see how this works. How else could it go? Well, that's pretty simple. All right, this undoubtedly is the end. So, this is the side that you connect the chainsaw to. Now, the question is, do we want to add I think this is a lot of bang for the buck. For less than a hundred bucks, this is incredible. Let's take this off of here. So, and let's take here, this is undoubtedly where you put the oil. And I think they have a little oil window where you can see how much oil's in it. All right. So let's go ahead and, I have Mr. Funnel, so we need to the uh, oil, and then we need an extension cord, and then we got the funnel, and probably want to prop that up, and look at the little window, oh look at that, how did that happen, funnel seems to work, so this is over here is what we're looking at, there's the minimum, Doesn't say where the max is, but um, hopefully that will show up. All right. Without making a mess, Jim. Oops, spoke too soon. Well, if there's a little window, I'm just not seeing it. So, that's all set. So the next step is to cut the chain itself. And remove it. Okay. And I believe this is the tightening. See how it lags? It's slacking a little bit like that. So then if you tighten it up, getting it in the groove.
That's kind of nice. You don't need a screwdriver to tighten up the chain. All right. So the next step is that we're going to get the, the wire out, the cable, and get it mounted. Let's go ahead and mount it now. How difficult can that be? So we're just strictly relying on intuition here. How might that work? All right. So the part that was a little bit tricky is this part right here. So basically, one of the tricks is that there's a little tiny uh, push out, that orange thing, and I'll show you in a second. And you stick it through the hole and you line it up with the only place where it could go. And then you screw it tightly. So let's take a look at that. I'll go ahead and untighten it a little bit. So, you can see that you line it up with that orange thing and you push it tight because it, it, it plugs in. It um, And then the part, you hold it flesh and then you screw it nice and tight. Make sure it's very snug because you'd hate to have that saw coming down on you. <clears throat> okay. So the next step is that we will go ahead. That was a little bit non-intuitive for me. But um, it seems to be pretty tight. I want to strip it. <sighs> okay. So the next step is that I will plug in the cable and we'll cut some palm branches. So there's the uh, quality work right there. We have no more palm branches that are touching the roof. So I'm happy. So with the step ladder, I should be able to do another, well, seven or eight feet higher. waiting to be put in some future hobo culture. So, let's go ahead and put the thing away. And in the disassembly of it, I can show you um, the trick on the uh, connecting the saw. All right, so I wiped down a bit. And I must say that that um, Why don't they just make a darn clear oil uh, front? Because I, with oil or without oil in it, I can't see any difference in terms of the oil level. What are you supposed to use, like purple oil or something? So, uh, manufacturer, this is the model number there. Why don't you uh, put a clear um, oil level uh, window on it? That thing sucks. And also, it's a bit heavy, but then it's 8 amps and 10 inches. So the whole idea is to use it as a chainsaw. So let's go ahead and undo it. So to undo it, I'm going to have to put this in here. So you unscrew this. So when you see it uh, initially, go ahead and clean up any oil that might have leaked in there. But the trick is, 
is that this pushes in. It's got a spring on it, and so does this. So somewhere or another when you push the button, and by the way, at the very end, there's a safety. So every time you um, stop it, pushing it, stop pulling on the trigger, the safety will engage, and then you push it back in when you're ready to go again. So that's good. I found that helpful. Oh, we forgot one thing. Mr. Sheath. So, you always want to put away the chainsaw. We already wiped it down. Just got to be a little bit forceful with it. All right, well, there we go. So, that's kind of it. Put a few things away here and probably put the oil next to it. That would be a good idea. So I'm not, so it weighs quite a bit. And that oil, uh, like I mentioned, that oil window should be clear and not opaque so you can't even see if there's darn oil in it. What, what's the damn purpose? But all things considered, um, it was a pretty good, pretty good hundred dollars spent. <laughs>